All right, so one additional um, aspect of gases that we should talk about is partial pressures. So it turns out the a partial pressure is the uh, pressure of an individual gas in a mixture. So each gas has its own pressure, essentially. And the sum of the uh, individual gases uh, equal the total pressure. So if we talk about the total pressure of a mixture of gases, it is equal to the partial pressure of the first gas plus the partial pressure of the second gas plus the partial pressure of the third plus however many gases are in that sample. So for example, Uh, if we think about uh, air, air is a mixture of several gases and uh, the amount of water in air varies significantly by region to region, you know, but the, depending on the weather, uh, depending on the season. And so most of the time when you look at the composition of uh, air, it's uh, reported as dry air, taking out the amount of water. Nitrogen is by far the uh, most common air molecule in the air. It's about 78% of the atmosphere. Uh, oxygen is approximately 21%. Uh, the third most abundant gas uh, is actually a noble gas, argon, which makes up about almost 1% of the atmosphere. And then uh, the last one is CO2, which is about 0.035%. Those four gases make up, you know, 99% of the atmosphere. And so usually those are um, the ones that are reported first. So we could calculate the total pressure of air by summing the partial pressures of nitrogen plus the partial pressure of oxygen plus the partial pressure of argon, plus the partial pressure of CO2. <clears throat> so the partial pressure comes in uh, to be a very important uh, mechanism when we talk about uh, breathing. Uh, actually, two uh, important aspects of breathing that we talked that we, uh, or we've talked about two important aspects of uh, breathing when talking about gases. All right, so um, it turns out when, uh, of course, our lungs, and here's my very poor drawing of our lungs, inside our mouth. Okay, uh, so when we're breathing in, our diaphragm actually causes uh, the volume of our lungs to increase. So the volume of our lungs increases. Now we know that the uh, pressure and volume are inversely proportional. So as the uh, volume of the lungs increases, um, the pressure decreases. And so the pressure in our side of our lungs is uh, much less than the atmospheric pressure and so air goes from inside uh, or from outside from the air into our lungs when uh, we're breathing out our diaphragm causes the volume of our lungs to decrease which of course causes the pressure inside of our lungs to increase uh, once the ink pressure uh, increases inside of lungs, it, once it's greater than the pressure uh, of the atmosphere, it would cause our lungs to, uh, or the air inside our lungs to go from high pressure to low pressure, and so they exit our lungs to the atmosphere. Uh, so that's of course just explained by the mechanisms and the relationship between volume and pressure that would get air in and out. Uh, the other important mechanisms for breathing is uh, getting uh, oxygen into our body 
uh, for cellular respiration and get, getting rid of CO2. And so that process can be explained uh, by the partial pressures of the two individual gases. So in our lungs, when we're breathing in, the partial pressure of oxygen in the atmosphere is much greater than the partial pressure of oxygens in uh, our blood. And just like uh, the pressure or air follows a pressure gradient, so is oxygen. So when uh, blood meets the uh, oxygen uh, from the atmosphere, oxygen is going to uh, flow from the atmosphere into our um, blood. Uh, in our tissues, uh, that oxygenated blood is uh, delivered to our cells where it's being used for, of course, cellular respiration. And so the uh, partial pressure of oxygen in the blood, oxygenated blood, is greater than the partial pressure of oxygen inside of the cells where it is needed. Of course, uh, just like the air inside of our lungs and the pressure from the atmosphere into in our lungs, oxygen is going to go from high pressure to low pressure. And that's how we deliver oxygen into our cells. Uh, the oxygen, of course, is needed for uh, metabolism. And one of the products of and products of cellular respiration, of course, is CO2. And so that causes the partial pressure of CO2 to build up in our cells much greater than the partial pressure of CO2 in our blood. So when uh, in that scenario, CO2 is actually going to travel from our cells into the, our blood system. And uh, of course, then that deoxygenated blood, as it is called, uh, travels back to our lungs, where the partial pressure of CO2 is much less than the partial pressure of CO2 in our blood. And so CO2 is going to go from our blood, dissolved in our blood, to exhale or exhale to the atmosphere. And so in this uh, mechanism, um, it explains how uh, oxygen can travel one way and oxygen would travel the other way because of the differences in partial pressure. The partial pressure of oxygen is very high in the atmosphere, and so in our lungs it travels from the air to our blood system. The partial pressure of CO2 is much higher than the atmosphere, and so it, it, it exits or it goes from our blood to the atmosphere. And the reverse is true for uh, our tissues, where partial pressure of CO2 is much greater in our cells, and so it goes to our blood. Partial pressure of oxygen is uh, decreased because it's being used up in the chemical reactions. And so oxygen travels from our blood to our cells. In both scenarios, the total pressures of the systems are the same. And so that's why the partial pressures um, are needed to explain uh, how oxygen can go one way and CO2 the other in both scenarios.